Have you purchased a new radio that's got this funny D-Star thingy on it? Or are you thinking about using this funny D-Star? Well, stay tuned, I'll tell you how. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie, with me, Keith. The digital mode D-Star isn't a new thing. According to Wikipedia, and I must just state as an academic researcher, it's not my first port of call for academic reference, D-Star was invented in the late 1990s by the Japanese Amateur Radio League, and it was picked up by ICOM, who started to introduce it as the digital system of choice for their radios. Why ICOM still continue to use it as their digital mode of choice, it has also been picked up by Kenwood, who've recently produced handheld radios with D-Star fitted as well. So if you've got one of these, let's show you how to program it. You need to go into your menu setting and find the following four options. My, Your, which is UR, RPT1 and RPT2. In My, enter your own call sign. This will be transmitted when you key up and identify you on the network. UR and RPT1 and RPT2 we'll discuss in a minute. Before we do, it's important to know that all hardware that operates on a D-Star network is allocated a extra port letter that follows its call sign. This is allocated depending upon which band it actually operates on. For instance, GB7PP is a D-Star repeater on 70 centimeters and therefore gets port B. If it was on 2 meters, it would have the port C. There are repeaters around the world that operate on both band A, B and C and therefore have all three letters allocated to their call sign. It's important to know which port a repeater operates on because without entering this correctly you will be unable to access the repeater. It's also important to know that in the settings of your RPT1 and RPT2 where a call sign is entered, you need to ensure that it actually totals 8 characters. For instance, GB7KH on port B has two spaces as shown here by the asterisk, and W1QS port C has three. Moving forward, I will ensure that all spaces have an asterisk so you know where to put them. And we can see this in the first example. Where a local ham wishes to connect to a repeater and check its status, in other words, see if it's connected via the internet to any other gateway, reflector or repeater, they enter in the your section seven spaces followed by the letter I. You'll also see that RPT1 has the repeater that they're actually using and its port letter added with two spaces. RPT2 is the repeater they're using, call sign, two spaces and G. G means that it's trying to connect to the gateway and only by doing this can they see if it's connected. In the next example, a ham wishes to check and see what their receive audio and transmit audio is like. To do this, they employ the echo test facility. The only change you'll note is under the your section, it has seven spaces, and rather than the letter I, as we previously saw, it now has the letter E. After transmitting and speaking, the echo test function will then repeat what it's just heard, and the ham can then listen to their own transmission back again. The next example shows two hams talking to each other via a repeater which is not now connected to a gateway or the internet. To do this you'll see that in RPT2 there is nothing added. Therefore it will not enter the gateway system. The your call sign is CQ CQ CQ. On the next example you'll see that they've enabled the RPT2 to allow internet linking for gateway users and dongle users. 
To do this, they've added two spaces and the port G after the call sign. To link to another repeater, users would put into the your section the call sign of the repeater that they're trying to access, a space plus the port code and the letter L. This indicates that it's trying to link to that repeater. You'll note that RPT1 and RPT2 are unchanged. If you wish to connect not to a repeater, but to the internet and a series of reflectors, which are like huge rooms connecting lots of different servers, then rather than the call sign of the repeater you're trying to access, you would put the reflector call sign, its port letter, and then the letter L. In this example, the user is connecting to the repeater via the internet to a reflector, which is REF001C. This is entered into the your section with the letter L indicating linking. To unlink from any reflector or repeater, the user would enter seven spaces and a U to indicate unlink in the your section. Again, RPT1 and RPT2 are unchanged. A great feature of the DSTAR system is that you can call another user even though you don't know where they are on the network. In this example, I call a friend of mine, Mike, G4GGC, via a repeater without knowing his location on the network. To do this, I enter his call sign with three spaces afterwards to ensure that there are eight characters. RPT1 and RPT2 again are unchanged and remain showing the repeater I'm trying to actually work through. If you're a hotspot user, the only change you need to make is to RPT1 and RPT2. This will show the hotspot call sign that you're using, which generally is your own call sign, followed by the port letter. If you're operating it on two meters, as this example shows, it will be your own call sign, couple of spaces, followed by the letter C. So you now know how to set up your radio to access either your hotspot or a local repeater and gain access to other repeaters, remote users, hotspot users or dongle users. If you've got any questions about this, put them in the comments below and I'll come back to you. If you like what I've done, then give us a thumbs up. It lets me know that I'm doing something right. Even consider subscribing and making sure you hit that bell. That way, YouTube will notify you every time I put new content on and you'll be able to watch that too. So, thanks for watching. My name's Keith, my call sign is G0FEA and I'm the Ham Radio Junkie and I'll catch you next time.